We're driving out to McCarthy and the Kennecott Mining Camp on the only road that goes out there. It's actually an old railroad bed, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. However, before we made this drive, we were warned that the road was terrible, we were guaranteed flat tires, a cracked windshield, all kinds of horrible things. As you can see, that was hype. The road's fine. Now, why the need for the railroad, and what's the deal with Kennecott? I'll get into that. To be profitable, the mining operation needed railway transportation to the coast so ore could be shipped to be processed in Tacoma, Washington. The Copper River and Northwestern Railway, nicknamed Can't Run and Never Will, based off the initials, was built between 1907 and 1911. At 196 miles long, with 95 miles of bridges and trestles, it took 6,000 men and $23 million to build. Within days of its completion, the first trainload of ore, worth $250,000 at the time, rolled down to Cordova. Kennecott's future success was ensured, and the large eastern financial investments were justified. The Kennecott Mill Camp and Mines are an extraordinary relic from America's past. The impressive standing structures and artifacts of the site tell stories of Alaskan exploration, westward expansion, technological modernization, World War I, the expansion of multinational corporations, and the death of monopolies. More intimately, Kennecott provides insight into the lives of the people who took on the challenge of living and working there. But why there? The wild, remote, and isolated Kennecott Valley, on the surface, seems like an odd place for industry, but the rugged Alaskan landscape actually holds the key to the discovery and development of one of the world's richest ore bodies. Generations of Atna people, those are the natives, collected copper that was found in the Wrangell Mountains, working it into art, utensils, and arrowheads. Prospectors flooding in the area in the wake of the 98 gold rush, that would be 1898, knew there was copper as well as gold in these mountains, so it was no surprise when the Bonanza mine was discovered in 1900. Prospectors Clarence Warner and Tarantula Jack Smith looked up Bonanza Ridge and saw what appeared to be green pastures, which were the mountainsides stained with the emerald hues of copper ore. Developing the rich ore body would require tremendous effort, ingenuity, and money. During the early 1900s, one could not find bigger financial backers than the Havemeyer, Guggenheim, and J.P. Morgan families. With a young East Coast mining engineer named Stephen Birch managing, the three wealthy families formed the Alaska Syndicate, which quickly gained a monopoly over the area's mining operation. When copper from Kennecott reached the world's markets and the syndicate became profitable, the group reorganized as the Kennecott Copper Corporation, which still operates other mines around the world even today. The corporation supplied the world with copper for electrification, utilities, industrial development, and munitions for the World War I effort. Kennecott Copper Corporation managed all aspects of their operation with creativity, skill, and at times a heavy hand. Kennecott, established in 1900, expanded in stages until the mid-1920s. As mining increased, the needs of the camp grew. Waste rock from the ore helped level the land for building on the valley's steep hillsides. By 1938, there were more than 100 buildings in the camp, but with a limited supply of ore and dropping prices, Kennecott closed that year after producing 200 to 300 million dollars worth of copper and silver. After closing, the camp endured many different eras, private mining, resort development, tourism, homesteading, and now the area's rich history is celebrated as Kennecott Mines National Historic Landmark and has been part of the National Park Service System since 1998. Some more Alaskan scenery for you as we're hiking out to the mining camp. There's my Italian interpreter up there. I thought it was interesting just because you can see the rails that were leading to and from the uh, mining camp are being slowly 
reclaimed by nature. It's run all through here and uh, there isn't much trace. There's another one back there. There isn't much trace of the uh, incredible railroad that used to run here. Here we are at the Kennecott site in Alaska. Tallest wooden building in Alaska. In the middle there. Pretty impressive to think about them building this out here. That's what happens when the buildings are not maintained. Familiar site to many of you in my videos. And that is all glacier out there. It's got a lot of dust and dirt on it, but that is all glacier. Let's take a closer look. Looking out over the glacier. It's all tailings from the mill right there. And then of course there's the mill. This is a trestle I'm on now. I can actually still see the rails embedded in the trestle. So that's pretty cool. You can see all the bits and pieces of equipment in the creek down there. The wash down. There's looking out over the glacier. And we got some buildings here. You can see the rails right there. A good view of the mill here. You can see it covering the hillside there. And of course there are those dramatic peaks in the background there. There's a good view of the mill building here. See the top of it there. It runs all along here. You can see the material We've been run along there over to this building for further processing. They're doing some rehab work here. That's the uh, noise in the background. Just enough to keep it from falling down. I can try and get a better view of the uh, mill for you. That's it there. And you can see uh, some of the milling equipment encountered halfway up. That's a conveyor belt hanging down right there. We made it up to the top part of the mill. Good view of it here. See the wreckage down below. See that huge spool of cable right there. Some twisted up rail here. And you see these cables here? Those are running down from the mountain peaks off in the distance there as part of the aerial tram and the ore will be brought down straight into the mill through there and then taken in for processing. Would have been something to see and to hear I'm sure. You can see a bit better here. You see those peaks up there? That's where the mines are and uh, where these cables are running down from. Another look here, those are the cables bringing the ore down. I haven't seen this side of the mill yet. Maybe brought in through there and then carried out on that platform into the mill. I think this is the biggest ore chute I've ever seen in my life. Can you go stand next to that, Eleanor, so people can see how large this ore chute is? So she's standing on the edge there. So she's on one side, and that's the other side of the ore chute. That is pretty incredible. 
interesting building here. It looks like they uh, stored lumber and pipes and stuff there, but it's interesting the way they have that organized and separated. See some of the other buildings here, and presumably the power plant here. Here's a view of the back side of the power plant, and there's uh, impressive looking stacks there, held up by this labyrinth of cables. And just behind me here, you can see there's all kinds of tanks and equipment, things like that. Very large tanks. No idea what this was. Some of the audience would probably know where it might say right here. Nope, still don't know. Another view of the power plant here. See the stacks right there in case you don't believe me. Lots of great uh, cast off stuff down here. That's the machine shop in front of us now. And uh, I mean just look how much stuff down there. That's awesome. And also down here. It's all stuff dragged out of the machine shop. I'm standing on a big tailings pile right now because the mill is right there above us with the uh, dramatic backdrop of the peaks. Another view of the mill. It's my Italian interpreter walking right there. Got the power plant directly behind me. You can see some of the buildings here have seen better days, unfortunately. These could definitely use a bit more than a paint job. Got the mill directly behind me. See the guys helping out with the rehab work. See some of the modern construction materials. And the mill, that's the top of the mill, just right there. I can't remember what these buildings were here, but I'll put a little message in the video what this was. See there's an enormous tank in there. Some of the old bunk houses, I believe. That one could use a little bit of love. This was a really large rock crusher, as you can see. Oh, I'm blocking the light. It's a large glacier right there, and actually, believe it or not, this is all glacier too. You can see a little bit of ice sort of right there peeking out. And what this is is just a bunch of dirt and rock piled up on top of the glacier. But of course it's much more visible right there as a classic glacier. The mines are up where those peaks are, but unfortunately they're no longer accessible. But what we have down here is pretty interesting too. See the glacier right there. And this is all glacier as well. You see the cracks and fissures in it and such. It extends a long way down that way. This view of the mines on a topographic map hopefully illustrates where things are in relation to each other. The Kennecott Mill and Mining Camp are down on the bottom right there. And then the Mother Load Mine, the Bonanza Mine, the Glacier Mine, the Jumbo Mine, and the Erie Mine are up in the peaks there. This glacier is melting like the others. This is the uh, leading edge. It's melting along here. I thought it was interesting, this uh, clear section of solid, very hard ice right here. God knows how old that is. But uh, I can see through it a ways down, which is interesting. At least uh, I know, maybe a foot or so. Very clear ice. I'm not sure if that's because it's compressed so much or what, but 
That's interesting to see and uh, curious to know how old that would be. Kennecott was very much a company town and the Kennecott Corporation was focused on keeping the miners restricted to safe and wholesome activities such as movie nights, dances, Christmas parties, or time on the company ice rink, baseball field, handball, or tennis courts. To be fair, that's pretty impressive for being in the middle of nowhere in Alaska more than 100 years ago. For the finer things in life, though, booze, tobacco, gambling, and prostitutes, the Myers had to hike five miles down the valley to this town, McCarthy. We're in a small town in Alaska, pretty far from anything. And uh doesn't take a lot to imagine how this would have looked in the uh, heyday of the mining era. Because it hasn't changed much. Almost all these, some of these buildings have been touched up a bit, but these are all original. You can still see the uh, general merchandise painted on the side of this one. That's pretty cool. See a false front right there. Got your obligatory saloon right there. Good stuff. This is a picture of the Bonanza Mine back when it was still active in the peaks above Kennecott. Another view of the Bonanza on the tramway. This is how the Bonanza looks today, unfortunately. This is the Mother Load Mine. And the Erie Mine. Unfortunately, none of these are accessible. This is a map of the underground workings. You can get a sense of how extensive they are by seeing this. Each of those is a different level. 